This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Listed on the National Register, it's a district more extensive than any other in the state of Florida. Hundreds of historic homes in a remarkable variety of architectural styles spanning the 19th and 20th centuries. It's the North Hill Historic Preservation District, and if you happen to find yourself just above downtown Pensacola, you'll discover it right in your own backyard. The Covington Bass House was built in 1902. It has been restored by Melanie Nichols and her husband, Jeff Durth. Melanie has served as president of the North Hill Preservation Association for many years. Though not a native of the area, Melanie provides a wealth of insight about the district's past and present. What I think is special and unique about North Hill is that it's an outdoor museum of architecture that you don't really see a lot of in many communities. And it's because the building started around 1860 and then continued on until about 1950. And so you see all of those different housing styles in one neighborhood. So if you start it from the southern end of the neighborhood, 1860s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and as you go northward in the neighborhood, then you move up in time. And so it's almost like a little time capsule of American building styles. At the end of the 1800s, Pensacola is very successful with the port and shipping and the lumber industry and all of these wonderful businesses downtown were having a boom. And if you think about Amer uh, Pensacola's first settlement around Seville Square, those are more simple cottages, uh, a little bit smaller. Well now these businessmen, they're making a lot of money and they want to kind of get out of the noisy uh, busy downtown area and they want to move up on the hill where there's breezes and they kind of wanted to show off all this new wealth that they had and so they started building uh, bigger homes with what at the, at the time was more modern conveniences like bathrooms and gas lighting and even some electric electric lighting and then they all kind of started like one-upping themselves and picking out different homes and different treatments and of course this was the, the lumber boom and so there was plenty of lumber to be had so lots of different shingles lots of different gingerbread trim all sorts of different wood materials that they wanted to show off on their homes It is the largest residential um, historic district in the state of Florida. And what's important about that is that, uh, just like in Europe, you can go to Europe and you can see how life would have been lived 200 years ago, 100 years ago. And it's like that now here in North Hill. You can come to North Hill and you can kind of get a feeling of what it must have been like to live in that, that time frame. And I think it's also important, if you think about it, in, this, in the 60s when they signed the National Historic Preservation Act, America was starting to realize that we were losing a lot of our history and we didn't want to do that. And the people here in Pensacola, which I, I will call like the beginning of the Green Movement, they didn't want to tear down these beautiful homes and put them in the landfill. They saw a lot of value here and they thought there was beauty here. This was the home of C.H. Turner, who not only constructed many houses in North Hill, but also several of Pensacola's most significant buildings. Located on North Balin Street, it's a treasury of North Hill and family history. It's occupied by Turner's grandson, Bill, who has lived here almost all of his life. Bill's mother, Joyce, was the founder of the North Hill Preservation Association. It was not an entirely original thought with her because back in 1963, my late cousin Mary Turner Rule, later Reed, uh, got a group of us together and we started the Pensacola Heritage Foundation around Seville Square. Well, that organization, uh, the Heritage Foundation, 
we were trying to promote adaptive use and there was a lot of that down there. So old houses turned into restaurants and shops and that sort of thing. And then up here at North Hill, there wasn't uh, so much a push to get things adaptive use, but just to restore the area and to preserve it. A lot of houses needed to be preserved and a lot of them have too. My mother would just really love to see it today. She was able to convince people of things, I guess, uh, convince people that it would not be uh, a bad thing for them to have restrictions on their property. One of the, the things that some people objected to when we first wanted to make this a preservation district was the uh, inspections that are required by the architectural review board, which the city was then to establish. As a matter of fact, I had I was chairman of the architectural review board for a while, but uh, it wasn't so much a problem to get uh, to encourage people to do it. Well, the encouragement was when they saw other houses being repaired and looking good. Those first families that that made that great leap. They invested here. Many of them had grown up here and had kept their family homes. Um, they were seeing as more and more families, you know, fled downtown to move into the brand new subdivisions near Cordova Mall area. Um, they, they were losing a lot of families and the homes were deteriorating. And they were very afraid that we would lose a lot of these homes. And so they worked uh, with the passage of the National Historic Preservation Act to make this a historic district and get some protections on the books so that we could start saving the homes. And they did a fabulous job. I've been in, in North Hill all of my life. My grandfather built this house uh, for their wedding cottage in 1896. They moved in the night they were married, December 10th, 1896 and uh, lived here the rest of their life. My father lived here all of his life and I have lived here all of my life. So I've been in this house now 78 years. The house is now 120 years old. This room behind us was the master bedroom first and I've, I recently changed it into a music room because I didn't need two guest bedrooms. But the one room that I don't think there have been any changes to is the dining room here. Uh, it's 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 really terrific. I think the the it's paneled in black cypress. My grandfather told my father that it took six men six weeks to create that room. It has 14 foot ceilings, which is two feet taller than any other room in the house. It's interesting to see it from above. They they originally put uh, 16 coats of varnish on the Cypress, black cypress, and it's had nothing since then. About 120 years, it's, it's survived. Well, my grandfather was Charlie Hill Turner. He had um, taken over the construction company when my great-grandfather became unwell uh, around 1890. They built a lot of buildings here, a lot of houses here. But in 1905, when downtown burned, my grandfather built, rebuilt downtown. He built the Brent Building and the Blunt Building. And then he built the Sanga Theater. He built the San Carlos Hotel. He built the old city hall, which is now the Wentworth Museum. The uh, architectural styles of, of all these houses that my grandfather built were really pretty different. The first one he built right down the street at 619 was very Queen Anne. Queen Anne, uh, you can tell a lot of the houses up here are Queen Anne. They have generally what's called uh, gingerbread, wooden, wooden, lots of wooden spindles in, in rails at the top of the porches. Uh, usually no overhang or not much overhang on the porch. Uh, high pitched roof. The Historic Pensacola Preservation Board created a directory of the various architectural styles that can be found in North Hill. The board counted more than 70 examples of Queen Anne architecture, the most prevalent style in the district. Queen Anne houses have striking profiles. 
and are quite asymmetrical with a great variety of decorative details. The Hutchinson House, built in 1916, is an excellent example of the craftsman bungalow style of architecture. Often characterized by wide overhanging eaves and low pitched roofs supported by square columns, craftsman or bungalow homes are the second most prevalent architectural style in the district, numbering more than 30 homes. Representing a West Coast influence, the houses also incorporate elements of the arts and crafts design movement. Steep roofs, cross gables, patterned brickwork, and massive chimneys are often hallmarks of Tudor Revival architecture. In North Hill, there are 12 examples of this style. Dr. Walter C. Payne had this Tudor Revival mansion built for his family in the late 1920s, inspired by a trip to England he and his wife had made a few years earlier. On the grounds of the Grand Home, their children later found artifacts from an 18th century battlefield. In 1781, the area that is now North Hill played a pivotal role in both the Revolutionary War and the global power struggle between England and Spain. From this site, Spanish troops led by Bernardo de Galvez bombarded the British-held Fort George. The British defeat returned Florida to Spain, and it helped to turn the tide of the American Revolution. There are a lot of interesting uh, things to see in addition to the houses in North Hill. Uh, Fort George is probably the most prominent. It's, it's nationally prominent, really. Fort George is a historic site, and it is within North Hill. North Hill sits atop of American Revolutionary War battlefield. The whole neighborhood was built on that battlefield site. And the parts of the fort are now kind of recreated for the public to kind of see in a, in a city park that's designated. And there's lots of wonderful signage about the war and about the role of that site in the American Revolution. Galvez was recently made an honorary U.S. citizen, and I think there are only about five or six of them ever. Uh, so he was very instrumental in, in assisting the U.S. in regaining this territory from, from Britain. Fifteen of the district's houses are neoclassical in design, also referred to as American classical. Their facades are dominated by high porches, and their roofs may be supported by Corinthian or Ionic columns. There are two dozen examples of folk Victorian homes in the district, with large windows and spindled porches, often with jigsaw cut trim. These homes created their own shade and cross ventilation as a way of adapting to the heat and humidity of the northern Gulf Coast. No matter which way the breeze was blowing, they would have a good chance of catching some of that breeze. And so that's why you'll see large windows on the homes. And the windows were able to be opened from the top and from the bottom. So it would let the, the hot air out of the top of the window and bring the cool air in through the lower part of the window. And at the turn of the century, people used their, their porches as their living rooms. They read out there, they played with children out there, they, they you know, worked on their vegetables, they did their knitting and their, and their yarn, they had better lighting out there. We didn't have the modern lighting that we do today. Uh, in a room this size, there may be only the equivalent of maybe a 20 watt light bulb. And so they, they lived on their porches. In the early days of the North Hill District, people generally got around on foot, horseback, or by carriage. Later, a more modern mode of transportation became available. Here on West DeSoto, the Brick Street is still lined with trolley tracks. Streetcar service in Pensacola began in the 1880s and continued for nearly half a century. A lot of people up here used the trolley. The trolley ran from downtown up here to North Hill. It came up Palafox Street to DeSoto, turned left west, and went up to Soto Street 
to Spring Street and then back down Spring Street. It doesn't look like much of a route these days, but uh, it was a way to get to town and back without having to walk. In the 19th century, the Florida Panhandle's abundant timber provided both raw materials for building and the wealth to make these magnificent homes possible. But in North Hill, there is also an abundance of stone, a substance which is rarely found in the region's sandy soil. And those are the ballast rocks that were on the ships that came over here from Europe to keep the ships upright because they weren't carrying cargo. Well, they were coming over here to take wood back. So the, the wood in the, in the hold of the ship was the weight. But I've always wondered why they didn't bring olive oil or something over here, but what they did was they brought rocks. The rocks were chunks of granite and they dumped them out in the bay and then there they were. Well, my grandfather wasn't the only one who did it, but he would send his crews down there to pick up the rocks and built walls. And there's a wall around this property, but most of it is granite. I mean, really nice stone. The broad category of Mediterranean Revival features subcategories such as Mission, Spanish Eclectic, and Italian Renaissance. Spanish colonial architecture became especially popular in California in the early 1900s and then came to the nation's attention as a result of the much publicized California Pacific Exposition in San Diego in 1915. Several examples of these styles can be found throughout the North Hill District. There are nearly 30 colonial revival houses in North Hill. They often feature decorative front doors and windows with double hung sashes. The prairie style of architecture is represented by several houses in the Preservation District. Prairie style homes emphasize horizontal lines with widely overhanging eaves and low pitched roofs. Though not seen in great numbers, many other architectural traditions can also be found in the neighborhood. Georgian Revival homes are recognizable both for their restrained ornamentation and for their emphasis on symmetry, proportion, and balance in all aspects of design. Shingle-style houses, as the name suggests, are distinctive for their use of continuous wood shingles, not only for roofing, but also on walls. Examples of Art Modern and Art Deco architecture can also be found in North Hill. There's a lovely one at the corner of Blunt Street and Barcelona. It's very big, gorgeous Art Modern home. Lots of curved, uh, curved walls on the outside. There's no harsh edges. Everything's kind of curved and modern. North Hill encompasses not only a preservation district, but also a vibrant community. A central gathering place is here at a park called Alabama Square. Well, North Hill's a great place to live. A lot of us know each other, and, and we get together at, at these functions that the North Hill Preservation Association puts on. This is the, uh, the cinema on the green that we do a couple of them uh, when the weather permits. Uh, uh, the nice time of year. We cover the lights on the south end of the park for uh, better viewing of the movie screen. Uh, we set up the popcorn, set up a few tables. Um, it's just, just very laid back. Everyone gets to meet their neighbors, all the kids uh, get to run around and play together beforehand. It's, it's just a good time. This happens to be the cinema on the green, but about eight or nine times a year we get together. We have a fall festival, we have a spring festival, and it's a very neighborhood event. Uh, the members of the association, and really we open it to all, all comers, quite frankly, in, in, when we have them. It's probably the, the largest, friendliest neighborhood I could, I could hope to live in, and, and I don't ever want to live anywhere else. 
With over 50 blocks of historic homes, it's a bit challenging to tell the story behind each one, but several individual stories help to provide a sense of the district as a whole. The, this house that belonged to the McLeans looks sort of like Tara, has, has two-story columns. It burned. It had a, a, a very severe fire, and uh, they had my grandfather come in and rebuild the house. Uh, they took off the ballroom, which was on the third floor, so now it's only a two-story house. So when it was built, it had been a three-story house. Now it's, it's a big two-story house, but it was bigger then than it is now. Featuring large plate glass windows and a reverse pitch or butterfly roof, this single-story home may seem out of place in North Hill. Architecturally, however, it is extremely important. In the early 1950s, it was designed for Dr. Nathan Rubin by Paul Rudolph, an eminent modernist architect who studied with the founder of the Bauhaus Design School. Rudolph's drawings for the home can be found in a collection at the Library of Congress. And that home is probably the most architecturally significant home in the whole area. Uh, this was a, an architect who was very similar to Frank Lloyd Wright, and I believe he has around 300 homes in the United States of America. And there are people and students who travel across the country just to photograph and look at his homes. This inviting front porch holds fond memories for many area residents. It was here that they would wait patiently to be called in for scrumptious Southern cuisine served family style at Hopkins Boarding House. They moved up here in the 50s into the house at Spring and, and uh, Strong Street. It became ever more popular and they had really good fried chicken and there would be mobs of people sitting on the front porch and sitting on the wall and uh, it was a great place for a long time and now it's a private residence again. This 19th century Queen Anne style home on West Jackson Street belonged to Eugene E. Saunders, a sea captain from New England. In its heyday, E. E. Saunders and company shipped tons of fish as far away as Baltimore and New York City and helped to establish Pensacola's reputation at the time as the red snapper capital of the world. In 1939, this house on North Roos Street was built for Wally and Virginia Dashiel. Known as Pensacola's own Mr. Baseball, Wally was a former Major League player who helped lead the Pensacola Flyers to three consecutive Southeastern League pennants in the 1930s. I think my favorite home in the whole neighborhood is Marjorie Hargreaves' home. And she is a third generation uh, family member to live in that home. It's a Queen Anne. And because it's never been outside of the family, it truly is a time capsule. Um, her grandfather was a doctor, so you can go up on the third floor where he used to have his offices, and they're still there. And the servants' rooms are still there, up there on that third floor. That's my favorite home. And when we painted our home, we copied the color of that home because we loved it so much. We bought this home in 1999 and began work on it. This home was about ready to be torn down, but we saw the bones. We knew that everything was here. It was solid. It just needed a lot of love, and uh, we were glad to do that. This home was built in 1902 for Oscar Leonidas Bass and his wife, Cornelia Covington Bass, and they had six children. Um, he owned Bass & Company, which was uh, probably what they would call the Walmart of the day down on Palafox Street. He sold everything under the sun and the moon in that store, and uh, this was built for them and their family home. We do feel like we're stewards of these homes and not really the owners. These homes have been here, you know, for more than 100 years before we were here. And we hope that we've done everything we can that they'll last at least another 100 or 200 more years. But we do like to open the homes to the public 
We have historic tours of North Hill for the public that we put on as often as we can because we want the public to come in and kind of be a part of their history. This is their history too, the people of Pensacola, and we want them to come in and to enjoy it. There are a lot of people who drive around up here and, well, some people who've, who've come to my antique shop next door uh, said, I didn't realize there was so much to see up here in North Hill and they just like to drive and see what, what is here. There are no two houses exactly alike. There is no cookie cutter home style in this neighborhood. Everything's different, it's very unique. And so we do, we do want to share these homes with the public. The North Hill District is located on the high ground just above downtown Pensacola. From Interstate 10, take I-110 south to the Cervantes Street exit and go west toward Palafox Street. From there, and for the next several blocks, if you turn left or right, you will enter the district. We hope you've enjoyed this look at Florida's largest residential historic district. We'll see you again next time, right in your own backyard.